Go ahead and introduce yourself and the course that you teach here at okay. university. Uh, my name is Josh Gully. I'm an associate professor in the uh, Department of Psychology and an affiliate in um, the um, Neuroscience Program and the Institute of Genomic Biology. Uh, and my course is uh, Psych 413, uh, cross-listed as Neuro 413 and MCB 413, uh, and the course title is Psychopharmacology. Could you just give us kind of a brief overview of what the class entails? Sure. Um, so in this course, we cover the... Um, behavioral and biological effects of um, drugs, and that includes drugs used therapeutically, as well as those that are used recreationally and uh, are sometimes abused. What type of background knowledge does someone need uh, before taking this class? Well, I, I think it's valuable to have uh, some biology. Um, I think it's valuable to have uh, potentially some neuroscience uh, coursework, some classes that touch on the brain, um, and then it's also valuable to have uh, some psychology courses. So the prerequisites, uh, there's a single really course prerequisite, um, but it could be uh, one of two courses. So I indicate that um, prerequisite is MCB 150 or Psych 210, uh, which uh, Psych 210 is um, Introduction to Behavioral Neuroscience. Um, I also um, suggest that uh, really um, any sort of 200 or 300 level uh, MCB course is, is also valuable to have, um, particularly the courses that are cross-listed in Neuro. Um, uh, Introduction to Neurobiology, I think that's uh, MCB 314, um, is a course that I think is, is, is good to have. Um, but uh, uh, again, if, if you've taken MCB 150 or you've taken Psych 210 and you're very interested in, um, in drugs, you're very interested in uh, the brain and how drugs work in the brain, uh, and you're also interested in behavior, then I think uh, you'll be um, prepared to take the class. So how do you think the topics covered in this course uh, apply to the current research and you know, other medical and scientific advancements that we've seen uh, in the past? Well, um, so I, I think of this class as, as being uh, what I would call a toolkit class, um, meaning that this the, the information that you get in this class and the experience that you get going through this class is something that's valuable for really anything that you do um, uh, as a student um, and particularly as uh, just a functioning member of society because um, everyone um, at some point in their life is going to use a drug, where it's there, whether it's therapeutically or uh, sort of recreationally. Um, and therefore, it's extremely valuable to know what these drugs uh, are doing to you, have the potential to do to you, and what, what they are doing to you once they get into your body. Um, so what we do in this course is spend a lot of time talking about the latest um, uh, literature that's out there um, that tells us uh, more and more about what a single drug exposure does and then what repeated uh, drug exposure does to the brain and behavior. But then we also, of course, um, focus on the fundamentals and the very basic knowledge, some of which we've known for quite some time. Um, so, uh, you know, to get back to your original question, we do a lot that, that really incorporates the latest findings um, and the latest drugs that are out there. Um, but then we also, there's a lot of foundational sort of stuff that, that's not gonna, that hasn't changed for many years. It's just a basic understanding that we have about what happens when a drug gets into the body, gets distributed throughout um, the periphery and the brain, and then has the potential to have an effect. So uh, what are some other classes in MCB that might go well with this class and the content that you teach? Well, I kind of touched on that earlier, um, but I think that um, any class that uh, is, is cross-listed in neuro um, is going to be uh, something that has, you know, some degree of overlap or, or relevant information. Um, I think um, uh, a lot of, of the psychology courses, um, particularly those that are taught by the behavioral neuroscience uh, division faculty or the um, cognitive neuroscience division faculty, I think are, are gonna have a lot of overlap. Uh, and then again, any of the sort of um, basic um, MCB courses, 100 and 200 level courses, I think are all gonna have a little bit of information that, that is useful for this course. Um, I think that this, that um, 
that this course, uh, you know, we do get into a lot of details um, and we do talk a lot about uh, mechanism, uh, what these drugs are doing in the brain, the neurochemistry of the brain. But I think that um, I try to be careful to uh, give information and, and give resources to get additional information in a way that the course is very, is very accessible to lots of different students and lots of different backgrounds mm -hmm. uh, uh, in those, for those students. Um, and I think the other thing that we try to do is spend a lot of time um, uh, offering ways that students can get additional help um, yeah. as well. Um, I highly encourage students to come and talk to me individually. I have regular office hours. Um, I have a TA who has regular office hours and I'm, I constantly reinforce that idea that you to come talk to me um, to get additional help uh, uh, and additional understanding when things aren't quite clear. So. Um, I think it's a class that's not, that, that is, is one you want to wait to take until maybe you're a junior or a senior um, because you do need some, some kind of uh, background sort of information, but it, it is one that I hope a lot of people consider uh, when they get to that stage in their, um, in their career. I guess what other things are you involved with besides just teaching on campus, do you need research or anything like that? or? Any other organizations? Or? Yeah, so we, uh, I, had, I have a research lab, a uh, pretty active research lab, uh, and our interests are in uh, psychostimulant drugs and alcohol, particularly amphetamine, um, and then of course alcohol. Um, and uh, our primary research focus is on how um, these drugs, uh, after repeated exposure, produced adaptations in the brain and how these adaptations then lead to dramatic changes in behavior. Um, we focus a lot of our research on the adolescent brain, uh, trying to understand how it might be unique from the adult brain. Um, and I think that's a particularly important question because um, most drug use begins um, uh, when people are young, um, when, particularly when they're at, in the adolescent stage, when you're doing things like experimenting and going off to college where drugs can be a lot more uh, available and, and um, more sort of socially acceptable to use them. Um, and so it's very important that we get a thorough understanding of, of, of what drugs do in the brain and how they have the potential to change the brain and behavior in a long-lasting way. Um, so we, we use animal models in our studies um, and um, have several um, uh, NIH grants to study, um, uh, to fund these studies that we do, um, and um, a number of different undergrads as well as graduate students and, and postdoctoral uh, researchers who, who help out in the lab and, and are uh, performing a lot of these studies. We also have a secondary line of research where we're focused on looking at nutrients um, and how they have the potential to change brain and behavior, and in particular how they might be able to uh, ameliorate age-related cognitive declines, which is something that I've gotten more interested in as I, as I get, to the, uh, get to be a little bit older. Mm -hmm. So if there's one thing an incoming student into your class should know about you, what would it be? I think that the one thing to know about me is that I um, I really do enjoy this subject matter. I really enjoy this class, and I want students to to take the class and learn a lot from it. Um, and that I am pretty challenging. I mean, I think the reputation that this class has and the reputation I have is is one where you will be challenged uh, in this course. I mean, after all, it is a 400 level course. Um, you'll be challenged, um, but that it will be worth it. If you do the work, um, you will be rewarded with a uh, you know solid grade, and you will um, learn an incredible amount. And so, I think what people need to, to know about me is that I'm very accessible. Um, I uh, enjoy well, interacting with students and helping them understand the material at a deeper level, uh, and doing well in the course. Um, and so I always encourage people to come and see me in my office hours and reach out for additional help, which I know is, is hard for a lot of students to do. They sometimes feel intimidated, but, but um, I try to knock down those barriers and encourage people to, to, to come and uh, interact with me as much as possible. Say there's a student who maybe is a junior or senior, but doesn't have the prerequisites for your course, but is really interested and would like to take it. What advice would you have for I them? Would, like that? I, I would tell them to contact me and, and, and even come and see me um, to talk to me about their interests and um, uh, their concerns about not really having sort of prerequisites. I think in most cases, um, 
th there's some confusion in the course catalog. It makes it appear that you need to have MCB 150 and Psych 210, but it's, it's, it's an either or sort of thing. And so typically, most students who are interested in this sort of topic um, and have the ability to take a 400 level class, um, that usually means that they've been here for uh, a year or two. And so almost everybody has had uh, MCB 150 or um, a Psych 210 sort of class. And so I think most have some prerequisite um, that, that, will, that will kind of sort of satisfy what they need for this course. But anybody who's, who's not clear on what, what they've got or they're worried that the class might be a little too tough for them should come and talk to me for sure because I'm always open to talking to anybody about it. Because I like to have a, a good active class uh, with a lot of students in it. And so I, I do try to recruit people to come in to the class and, and at the same time I also sometimes discourage people who who aren't there yet you know sometimes we'll have a, a freshman or a sophomore who's real uh, motivated and wants to wants to uh, to take the course real early and I usually discourage particularly freshmen but uh, sometimes sophomores will take the course but but I um, I will sometimes discourage people if I feel like they're not quite ready for it um, but anyway, the, the the basic message is come talk to me. How full your class usually is, and if if there's usually a, a very competitive atmosphere around signing up for the getting class. into the class. You know, it depends. Uh, it varies from semester to semester. Uh, I would say, generally speaking, the class has tended to fill up. Um, the the I, I allow it to have a maximum of 150 students, so it's it's very large for a 400 level class. Um, the part of the reason for that is I only teach it one time a year. It's all, I only teach it in the spring. I usually teach it every spring, but there there have been occasions when I didn't teach it. For example, when I've been on sabbatical, um, it, it's a course that can fill up. Now I will tell you um, uh, that what happens a lot of time after the first class or the first couple classes is people will drop it because they. Um, sometimes, I mean, uh, let's face it, you know, drugs are something that's, like I said before, you know, everybody's interested in it because it impacts everybody at some point. Um, you're, you're going to take a drug because you're going to get sick, you're going to get prescribed something, or you're going to, uh, you know, drink alcohol or um, um, smoke cigarettes and get nicotine or, or drink coffee and get caffeine. So everybody, this impacts everybody, and so there's lots of interest in this. And sometimes people sign up for it just because they're interested in the notion of drugs, but maybe they're not quite ready to do the work they're going to need to do to really understand this on a deep level like, like um, I want students to understand it. And so we do have people who drop the class after maybe the first first um, uh, core, uh, class meeting or two. So if it is full and you can't you can't sign up for it, I would encourage people to um, uh, you know come to the come to the first day of class and um, talk to me about that fact. And usually, I've never had it be the case where people didn't drop and you couldn't sign up even before the first exam happened. So. Uh, if it fills, I would encourage people to to just to, to, to be persistent and stick with it. All right, Dr. Gulley, thank you very much. We appreciate You're you welcome. taking the time and answering some questions. For You're us. welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.